today we're going to be talking about the gospel of prosperity. This is going to be a three-part series. The first part is going to be just the history of it. It's going to be a pretty quick video and I'm going to give it straight to you. I'm not going to give you my opinion, just the history of it and what it means. The second video, I'm going to dig into the televangelist and some of your favorite prosperity gospels um, from the past and the ones that are around now. And then my third video is going to be about the um, victims, the people who have been impacted or who have let the, pro the teachings of prosperity um, gospel um, ruin their lives. So I will throw in a disclaimer here. I don't care what you believe. I don't care if you're Christian. I don't care if you're Catholic. I don't, which is still Christian. Bleh. I don't care, you know, what denomination you are. Let's put it that way. I don't care if you are um, Islamist. I don't care if you are Jewish, Hinduist, Buddhist, atheist. I don't care what you are. I don't care what you believe as long as you try to be a good person. That's really all that matters to me. Um, but let's dig into this. So prosperity theology can be dated back to the early 1900s, and it coincides with the Industrial Revolution. During this time period, we had strong, very powerful, wealthy men like um, J.P. Morgan, Andrew Carnegie, J.D. Rockefeller. They were all getting all this bank, making all this money. And it's amazing how these two things kind of intertwine. Its origins consist of Pentecostal beliefs, new thought teachings, and American ideologies such as individualism and the attainment of the American dream. Before we dive into this, there are a couple of terms I want you to be familiarized with. The first one is tithing, um, and that means that you're giving 10% of your income to your church. It is what God commands if you are a Christian, some um, Different religions also have some form of tithing in it. Offering uh, is anything beyond that 10% that you are willing to give. The last thing that I want you guys to know is new thought. New thought is having ideas of spiritual healing, the creative power of constructive thinking, and personal guidance from an inner peace. This is where we get all the self-help books and crap. When we talk about the foundation of prosperity gospel, we have to start with E.W. Kenyon. And he was a Baptist preacher and is often credited with the introduction of mind power teachings to early Pentecostal um, people who practice Pentecostalism. Um, he had many friends who were Pentecostal leaders. Now, I know I'm going to be talking a lot about pen, um, people who are Pentecostal, but I want to just throw out another little disclaimer. I have lots of friends who uh, are part of the Pentecostal denomination. I don't have anything against them. This is just the background of it, and these are facts. Okay. He often wrote about uh, supernatural revelations and endorsed positive talk. If you haven't watched my um, video on toxic positivity, you should because it's kind of intertwines in that. He taught that since Jesus died on the cross, we had the right to divine healing and that as believers, we could attain this healing by positive faith-filled speech and the word of God. He also taught his believers to demand healing because they were already legally entitled to it. Now, I could do a whole video on this guy alone and his teachings and things I agree with and things I don't agree with, but we're going to move on because the next person who helps building into that foundation uh, probably is a little bit more influential and his name is Oral Roberts. I know you guys have heard that name. Now, he began pimping the prosperity gospel in 1947 um, in what he called the blessing pack. And that's where whatever you donate, God would return your donation in seven folds. And you would receive these donations back from unexpected sources. So I guess if I donate some money to the church, and then I decide to go and play the numbers and I hit those numbers. That's one of those unexpected uh, sources, I I'm assuming. And any of my people who don't know what um, numbers are, it's like some type of foreign gambling. So, you know, just in case you didn't know. Anywho, he will later call these teachings the seed faith doctrine. And keep that in mind because in my next video, I'm going to cover Paula White. And she loved talking talking about, um, especially in the early, early 2000, uh, sowing your seed, uh, making sure you make that 
first seed offering and things of that nature. And if you don't know who Paula White is, which I'm pretty sure you guys do know, she um, is Trump, President Trump's uh, spiritual leader at, at this point in time. Roberts also had uh, been recruiting uh, what he called partners, and these were wealthy donors and very influential Americans who um, they received exclusive conference invitation and access to him um, in ways that other people didn't get. And let's say, okay, let's let's compare him to like T.D. Jakes and Joel Olstein, where T.D. Jakes kind of networks with Oprah and Tyler Perry and uh, Joel Olstein's doing whatever the crap he's doing with Kanye. I don't, I don't know what that is. It's kind of scary. But anyway, moving on. Um, there are also others such as A.A. A. Allen, and he was big in the 50s. And to me, he was just a snake oil salesman. Um, he had these uh, miracle tent shaving revivals, and he sold prayer cough. I mean, he typical snake oil guy. Um, he taught that faith could miraculously solve people's financial problem and claimed to have had miraculous experiences in which God supernaturally change dollar bills into $20 bills. I'm going to try that tonight, guys, because um, if I, I've got a bunch of ones sitting in um, a little jar in my room. And if I pray hard enough, let's see if they turn into $20 bills. I'll let you know in the next video. Um, there's also uh, T.L. Osborne, and he also taught for the prosperity gospel. Um, he was known for flexing his wealth. So he was the first uh, mega church prosperity pastor, so to speak. Now, also during this time, you had an explosion of Christian radios, Christian events, and all of these different preachers were vying for everybody to follow them because it costs money to be on the radio. It costs money to, to uh, do these different tent revivals and stuff. They want to be able to make an investment and receive a return. Um, you know, it, but in any event, now I'm not going to uh, lump Billy Graham into this, even though during this time period, he was also doing his crusades. And that's because I really don't consider him to be a prosperity preacher. Uh, I'm pretty sure he got some money. I've, I've seen his, his house. And he's from North Carolina. I've seen that house when he was alive that he lived in. Um, but I, I just, I think he believed what he said. I don't, I'd never saw him trying to show off the different things that he has in, in ways that other people had. He was very humble about it. So un unless I find something that, you know, says different or you guys find something, let me know. I'm not going to cover Billy Graham. Uh, if we were to do politics and religion, he'd be top on my list. Now, as we start to move into the 70s and 80s, we start to get into televangelism. And whoo, I don't know about y'all, but I used to fall asleep as a child with the TV on, and I'd wake up to some televangelist, probably Robert Tilton, screaming at me through the television. That was some scary stuff. <laughs> Thank God for Netflix. All Netflix does is ask, are you still there? Um, this, like I said, televangelist is going to be a video all by itself. But I remember uh, having Jimmy Faye and, Tam uh, excuse me, Jimmy and, and Tammy Faye Baker uh, on the PTL network, which praise the Lord network. And, um, having to watch Flying House on TBN. And those two networks really uh, brought out the tele... You know, they made these, these preachers notorious. And so you have people like Robert Tilton, and I know everybody in America has had to have either had it come to your house or you've seen one of those envelopes with his name on it and a message up there. I think my stepfather gave him some money back in the 80s, and it is 2020, and he is still sending him different uh, letters and asking for uh, money. And it's ridiculous. And then also you had Benny Hinn. And the first memory I have of Benny Hinn is him slapping somebody upside the head and that person falling out and me thinking as a child, oh, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go to that church. No. But with the TV boom and now with the rise of the internet, these prosperity preachers are able to gain access to people all over the world. And we have different prosperity preachers from all over the planet. You have them in Africa. They are really starting to boom in Africa and Asia. Um, and then, you know, of course, you have them here in the United States. You have some in Europe. 
it, it's it's really weird how it's starting to kind of become a global sensation or a global problem as I, I see that I consider this to be a scam, but I'm not going to go into my opinion too much in this video. Now, preachers who teach prosperity often use several scriptures in the Bible to justify what they're saying. I'm going to quote just a couple of these scriptures and I'm going to quote them from the New International Version because even though um, as a child I had to, to read the King James Version, ain't nobody got time for that today. So one of the first scriptures is coming from the book of Malachi and the book of Malachi is used so much in the prosperity gospel. But in chapter 10, chapter 3, excuse me, verse 10, it states, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room, or excuse me, not be, gosh, I hate reading Bible quotes, not be um, room enough to store it. And then also another one is that they use as far as like having faith and then being healed is uh, the third John verse one excuse me, chapter one, verse two. And that is, dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. And one of the biggest things that they use from the Bible is the parable of the talents that's found in math, in the book of Matthew. And it's where this master leaves his servants in charge of his house and he gives them all different types of or amounts of talents based upon their abilities. So the first um, servant received five talents. The second servant received two and the third servant only received one. And so the first, when the master came back, he asked them what they did with their talents. And the first and second servant said um, that they had put their talents to work and doubled the value of the property um, and the servants were rewarded. But the third servant, he had buried his in the ground and had hidden it. So he was not uh, rewarded. And that's a, you can also find this parable in uh, the book of Luke and in the uh, summarized kind of skimmed down version in the book of Hebrews. But that's some good stuff. And that's what they pretty much use to kind of um, make it seem like in order for you to be in God's favor, you have to make sure that you are tithing. You have to make sure that you are giving God offerings and that when you do give these things, you are a cheerful giver because um, that is a Bible verse. And he also, they also want to make sure that, um, you know, if, if your faith is not good, if you're not thinking positively, if you're not believing in God, then your health is going to be bad and you're going to be poor and your life is just not going to be prosperous. And that would be, I don't know that if I'm doing everything that I possibly can to make my life better and I'm doing all the things that these guys are doing and, and what they're saying is not coming into fruition. Yeah, I, I'm going to start to feel some type of way, but I'm going to move on. And just say this, that as I dig deeper and deeper into this, I've especially as I've begun to re research the victims and people who have really ruined their lives because of this, the gospel, gospel of prosperity, it, it can be really dangerous. And we have to really kind of hold some of these people accountable. Now, another disclaimer, not all preachers are prosperity preachers. Most preachers are not. Some preachers preach fire and brimstone. Some preachers are more of teachers than preachers. And they're not trying to get you riled up. They're just trying to make sure that you're, you're having an understanding of um, the Bible. Some preachers are still the humble ones that we used to see back in the day um, who understand that they are actually there to serve their flock and not their flock serving them. So, you know, I don't want to just lump every minister into this prosperity preachers, but there are some, and you guys know who they are, that walk around here looking more like pimps, YouTubers, and movie stars than they do like they are actually out in these streets serving the people. But I'm going to end this video here because I've given you um, the historical background of the prosperity gospel. 
if you guys have a specific televangelist or minister you guys want me to cover, let me know in the comments because I will go after them. Well, I'm not going after them because that's not my style, but I will give you the information that I find on them. Um, so part two of this will be posted next Sunday. And I think I'm going to keep Sundays as sinister Sundays or we kind of dive into murders, mysteries, scandals, and scams that are based upon religion. I, I think I kind of like that vibe. But anyway, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you don't, it's okay. If you like what I'm putting on my channel and like my videos, definitely subscribe. We would love to have you over here. I cover all types of mysteries, murders, scandals, and scams. And um, with that being said, you guys have a great night and I'll see you in the next video.